embrace this day.
I said, praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We give God praise, we give him honor, we give him glory. For great is our God, and greatly to be praised. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have come to bless his holy name. We give God praise, we give him honor, and we give him glory. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And his expectation of his people is that we would rejoice and be glad in it. Today we are coming to you by way of Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church in the great city of San Pedro. We thank God for all of the people who are present this morning. The few of us who come each week in order to continue to push out ministry, to push forth ministry, to send out praises unto God and a word unto his people. I thank all of you for being here this morning. We appreciate your service unto the kingdom, unto the Lord. And as I always remind you, you are storing up treasures in heaven for the work in which you are doing. We want to be mindful of those who are on the sick, the shut-in list. We're praying today for Mother Dorothy Clemens, who went home this past week. Continue to pray for Mother Clem. She is rehabbing at home. Uh, and we're asking that you all continue to call her name before the Lord. We're praying for Sister Kathleen Overturf. We're praying for Sister Evelyn Mitchell. Praying for Brother James Ridgeway. Praying for Sister Talia White. Praying for Sister Caritha Williamson will be having surgery here in the next week or so. Uh, and I'm asking that you all pray for her. We're praying for the bereaved hearts. We're praying for Mother Cleo Hall. We're praying for uh, the Barnes, the Cooksey, and the Olive family uh, for the passing of Brother Jermaine Ford. Praying for Sister Rita Harris. And we're praying for the McGee family. I ask that you all continue to be in prayer for all of those in the kingdom who stand in need of prayer and even those who are outside of the kingdom. Hey, want to remind you real quick that on the 19th of December, Saturday, December 19th, we are going to be uh, having a, uh, a Christmas dinner uh, for the neighborhood, really, for the neighborhood. It's not just for those who are without uh, shelter, uh, but it's for any and all who desire to come out. We're getting the word out. It'll be in the newspaper next week. Uh, it will be from 11 to 1.30. Uh, the Ujima Project has been kind enough to supply us with a thousand meals. Let me say that again. With a thousand meals. And all we have to do is put some elbow grease behind it. They've already prepared them. They're already packaged. And all we have to do is be the hands and the feet of Christ and give them out. To people. So on the 19th, if you're interested in volunteering, please talk to Sister Lydia Haley Clark. She has the sign up list, uh, and we appreciate anything that you do to help in this uh, endeavor. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Be mindful of uh, this coronavirus that's going around. The numbers are getting worse. If you've not heard, Southern California is going to a stay at home mandate beginning, I believe, tomorrow tomorrow. For those of you who are working in the ministry here on the weekends, we will get you an essential letter here in the next few days. That way, if you're stopped by the police, you tell them that you're doing essential work at the church. Uh, and we're praying that uh, you won't have any issues uh, with law enforcement. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we bless and praise and thank thee, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us an opportunity to come once again unto thy throne of grace. Lord, we come boldly, we come confidently, knowing that you have not brought us this far to drop us off by the wayside. We come, Lord God, confessing our sins before you, knowing, Lord God, that we have missed the mark, that we have come up short that we've done some things and said some things and thought some things and behaved in a manner that is antithetical to your will, your way, your word, and your work. 
God, we ask for forgiveness even now. Purge us, Lord God, with hyssop. Wash us that we would be whiter than snow. We pray that that which we endeavor to do today would be blessed from on high, Lord God that you would be glorified, Christ Jesus magnified, and that your people would be edified. We ask a blessing upon the sick, the shutting in. We ask that you touch them in the midst of their situations and their circumstances. We pray, Lord God, that you would reach from heaven down with your finger of love, that if it be your will, Lord God, you would strengthen their bodies, put them upright, and send them on their way. We ask a blessing upon those who are bereaved, not just recently, but those who are still struggling with the passing of a loved one this last year, the last couple of years, the last five years. Some of us, Lord God, never get over the burden of saying farewell to our loved ones, Lord God. So I pray that you strengthen them from the inside out, that you remind them that you're still here, Lord God that you're walking with them, talking to them, Lord God, and that you've not left them in and of themselves. Now, God, we ask a blessing upon the word today. We ask, Lord God, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. Clear our minds, Lord God. Purge us of anything that would hinder, that would slow down your word from reaching our hearts in a special way. And we believe that when we leave this place, we'll leave the better for coming. Now, God, as always, we're in your care. Continue to have your way in this place. It's in the blessed name of our Savior and our Redeemer, King Jesus. We ask these and all blessings in his name. Let the people of God say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on and give God some praise. I said, come on and give God some praise. Yeah, we, we've come to praise him. I know it's only a few of us, but you know, when the praises go up, when the praises go up, the blessings come down and we're thankful to God. Grab your Bibles, stand with us. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles, those of you who are at home, those of you who are listening via podcast, whatever your main vehicle is for listening to the Word of God today, we ask that you have your Bibles handy, whether it be on a device or your phone or an actual Bible, paper Bible, amen. Some people still use the regular Bible. I'm, I'm one who advocates for the regular Bible, amen. Turn to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13. We have been dealing with for the last few weeks, not under the guise or the heading of any type of theme, but we have been trying to bring messages of encouragement to the people of God, especially at a time such as this where it appears that the whole world has gone to heck in a handbag. Amen. And we want to encourage you and we want you to know that God is still in control, and that he's still working this thing out. That he's not left us, he's not forsaken us. And here in Acts chapter 13, we want to lift one verse, one verse. And that's verse 52. Acts chapter 13, verse 52. From the pages, from the annals of God's holy word. And here's what the word of God says. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again for you. And the disciples, the people of God, the men, the women, the boys, the girls who had called upon his name were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. From that one verse I want to use as a theme this morning, as a focal point for all of us in order that we might at least have our minds clear in what direction we're going from the theme fill me up please fill me up please you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I can clearly remember as a child going to the service station 
with my grandmother. And they had what was called a gas station attendant. And you could pull up to the pump in your Buick Deuce and a quarter. And the service attendant would ask you, how much gas do you want? And some of us who didn't have much means could say, put $5 of regular in. So they had regular gas. Or give me $8 of unleaded or diesel. But some of us who had a few dollars in our pocket could just say, fill me up, please. And they would begin to put the gas in your car. They would put air in your tires. They would check under your hood to make sure all of the fluid levels were where they were supposed to be. And it was a part of the regular service of the service attendant at the gas station. This was before they went to what they call now self-serve. But it's important that we understand in the kingdom that some of us are in this mindset of spiritual matters of self-service. In other words, we believe that we are the captains of our own destiny and that we are, by way of the gifting of God, that we're able to determine exactly the course of life in which we take. The emphatic and definitive categorical word that deserves our attention in this verse is field. It's field. It is a Greek word, pleuroo, which means to feel full. It means to feel to the degree that there will be no room left empty. It does not mean to have a measure of joy or a portion of the Holy Ghost. It does not mean to be somewhat familiar with Jesus, but to be wholly filled with and possessed by joy and more importantly, by the Holy Ghost of God. It means to be utterly and totally lost in the life and the fullness of Jesus. I have wrestled with family for some time now. Why is it that there are some within the kingdom that it appears that they are able, not able, excuse me, to find their footing as it pertains to their journey with God. There are some who appear that on every occurrence that they are able to gather themselves, that they are able to formulate a spiritual plan, that they are able to walk in the direction that God would have them go on the straight and the narrow, doing the things and keeping their mind focused on the things of God. But yet there are others who appear to be on a spiritual roller coaster that is always down more than it is up and their mood swings changes with the weather. That there are some people within the kingdom that you would never know that they are saved by the way that they complain, by the way that they clamor, by the way that they backstab, by the way that they never have joy, they never have praise on their lips. There are some people who it appears that they struggle, they scramble, they stumble their way through this Christian journey. And I have conceived in my own mind and in my own spirit that these these are people potentially that have not been filled up. These are people who don't understand what is available to them as believers. I know it sounds easier than it actually is. However, if we're going to be filled with joy... And if we're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost, we must unconditionally, we must unequivocally, we must unquestionably submit and surrender ourselves to Christ. It is, family, the extensiveness of the filling that constitutes the essence 
of the perfect blessing. I don't just want to be blessed. I want the perfect blessing of God. In other words, I want everything that God has purposed and planned for me. But I have a part to play in the perfect blessing. There are some things that I have to be mindful of. There are some things that I have to be thinking about. There is a focus and an attention in which I must give to the things of God in order that God might provide unto me the perfect blessing. A fountain half full will never become a spring. Hmm. A river half full will never become a dependable water source. A heart half full filled will never be able to know what Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says when the Bible declares that God will give us the peace of him which passeth all understanding. You cannot know the peace of God unless you've been filled with joy and filled with the Holy Ghost. There are too many believers that are distracted by the things of the world. There are too many of us that are living far beneath our privileged potential because we believe foolishly that God is not operating in our lives. We believe foolishly that God has not given us the things in order to be spiritually successful in this world. But we stop by to tell you this morning, Fill me up, please. God, I need you to fill me with your joy. I need you to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I want to be like these disciples that you're describing in Acts chapter 13. The 13th chapter of the book of Acts informs us of the missionary journey and the work of Paul and a brother by the name of Barnabas. Paul addresses the synagogue audience with similar addresses as Peter did and Stephen did in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 7. Paul began by outlining the history of Israel. He began by showing the Jewish people that the promised Savior had already come in the person of Jesus Christ. And although the Jews in Jerusalem rejected and killed Jesus, Paul emphasizes that God raised him from the dead in order to provide proof that Jesus was the son of David. All who repented of their sins and believed in Jesus would find forgiveness and salvation. But the Bible tells us that the Jews did not respond to that message well. The Bible says they were angry. The Bible says they were contentious. The Bible says they were adversarial. And the Bible says they began to gather themselves together in order to run Paul and Barnabas out of town. But the Bible says that once they responded to the word of God the way they did that Paul and Barnabas pivoted. They shifted their attention from the Jews to the Gentiles. And the Bible said that the Gentiles received the word gladly. The Bible says that the Gentiles received the word with joy. The Bible says that the Gentiles received the word with some clapping in their hands and some shouting in their spirit. The Bible says that the Gentiles received the word of God with some stomping in their feet. Am I talking to anybody? There's some of us that know when the word of God comes forth that it comes with such power that you can't sit still in the midst of it. There are some of us that realize when God begins to speak, I can't help but begin to move. I move in his direction. I move in my spirit. Some of us are 
more like John the Baptist. The Bible says that when Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, who was the cousin of Jesus, the Bible says there was a concern that the baby was, baby was going to be born a steel baby because after six months or so, the baby never moved. But Mary and Elizabeth were pregnant at the same time. And the Bible says that Mary showed up one day at the house of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And the baby began to move in the inside of Elizabeth just because it was in close proximity to Jesus. Let, let me just tell you what that means. That means that when you feel the Spirit of the Lord upon your heart and your mind, there ought to be some moving in your limbs. There ought to be something that happens on the inside that quickens your spirit and Paul and Barnabas said if you don't want it we'll give it to them Bible says they took it to the Gentile Gentile said we will gladly receive it as a matter of fact verse 52 is not speaking about the attitude the demeanor the mindset of Paul and Barnabas Verse 52 is talking about the disciples that they converted from the Gentile world. And the Bible says they were filled with joy. The Bible says they were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Let, let, let me get to the text. Let me, let me get to the text. There are several things that we have to be mindful of that we have to understand about this feeling of joy and the Holy Ghost. I did not say feeling, I said feeling of joy and the Holy Ghost. There are several things in this verse that we have to undergird, that we have to debunk and disentangle to unpack it in order that we might understand the ramification, the consequences of such a statement in the word of God. The verse itself does not break it down to this degree, but yet the word of God confirms the word of God. There are several things that you and I have to be mindful of in the midst of this feeling if we're going to be able to pull up to the spirit of God and declare unto him fill me up please. The first thing that you have to understand and be mindful of is the commander in this feeling. The commander. The commander. The real commander in chief. Yeah, of the universe, of time and eternity. The real commander in chief is the commander in chief from the alpha to the omega, from the beginning to the end, from the introduction to the conclusion. He is the real commander in chief. He cannot be voted out of position. He does not need your approval and or your authority for him to do exactly what he does. He is the commander in this feeling. The Bible says, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. This feeling is connected to a living person, the commander, if you will. We are not filled with an influence. We are not filled with a sensation. We're not filled with a set of ideas and or truths. We are filled with a person by way of Jesus, the commander. This concept is entirely different to that of the world. Human systems, human philosophy, Philosophy, human religion deal mainly with intellectual truths. They deal mainly with moral conditions. They deal mainly with external behavior. Greek philosophy
philosophy family was a system of ideas. Confucianism is a system of morals. Judaism was a system of laws and ceremonies. But Christianity is centered in a living person. And it's the very essence is the indwelling of the life of Jesus himself. He is not only its head and its founder, but is forever its living heart and its substance. And the Holy Spirit is the agent or the channel through how he enters into and possesses and operates in the life that is consecrated to him. If you are not consecrated unto God, though you may have knowledge of who he is and you may have some experience every now and again with the Holy Ghost, you're not being controlled, you're not being operated by the things of God. But when you've been filled all the way up with the Holy Ghost and you've been filled all the way up with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, I am telling you that's when things began to change in your life. Your whole perspective is different. You have joy just thinking about the commander. When I think about how he healed people, when I think about how he fed people, when I think about how he spoke as nobody had ever spoke before or since him, and when I think about how he walked on water, when I think about how he confused and confounded the wise men in the temple, when I think about how he hung on a cross for my sins in order that I might be repented back on to God. I'm telling you, it gives me joy. It gives me joy. When I can praise him, I have joy. When I can serve him, I have joy. The Holy Ghost in me begins to move just at the mention of his name. When I hear the name Jesus, it does something for me. When I think about the name Jesus, it does something for me. I am telling you, he is the commander of the feeling he is the one who determined that we would come in in order that we might be filled the commander of the feeling this family reduces the Christian experience to its most basic simplicity you do not need to be filled up in various parts of your life and by many different experiences, different ideas, different influences. All you have to do is make Jesus the center hmm, of your life and you will be filled to the brim. You will be running over when you think of the goodness of God, your joy will be undeniable and unspeakable. As a matter of fact, you will confound the devil and the world because they will think you've lost your mind. But you need to remind them, I haven't lost my mind. I've gained my mind because I've gained a different perspective and it's built upon the foundation that Jesus is my commander. Mm. It is not enough, family, to be saved. You have to be surrendered. You have to submit to the things of God. And if you're going to surrender and to submit to anything or anyone, Jesus is the one because there's nobody more reliable than Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, <laughs> yet without sin. Jesus is reliable because everything I go through in this life 
he was tempted by the same things in a different way, yet he was without sin. He was tempted by it all, and he has dealt with it all, yet without sin. In him dwells the perfection of the Godhead. There is no sin. There is no untruth. There is no error. There is no failure. There is no stain. There is no mistake. There is no fault in him. And if we're going to be able to proclaim, to declare, fill me up, please. You have to first understand and be mindful of the commander in the filling. But not only do you have to be mindful of the commander in the filling, you have to be mindful of the completeness of the filling. This family is critical. We have to realize that the work that was done in us is a complete work. We enter into the fullness of Christ by recognizing ourselves as fully justified and forever saved from all past sin and all past transgressions through the complete redemption of Jesus Christ our Savior. The lack of fullness and or the complete feeling in our subsequent experience, I believe, is due to doubts and limitations in which we place upon ourselves. Christ's work for our redemption was finished, and when we accept that fact, it is a complete and eternal salvation that belongs to God's people. It was Jesus that declared on the cross, it is finished. The word finished means so much more in the Greek than it does in the English. In the English it merely means to be done with something. In the Greek it means to make an end and or to accomplish something, to complete Complete something, not merely ended, but to bring it to perfection or its destined goal to carry it through all the way to the end. Jesus has provided for us in his atonement and in the resources of his grace, the feeling of joy and the feeling of the Holy Ghost. It's all wrapped up in him and we must receive it as the free and perfect gift that it is. It is amazing to me how we will clamor, how we will go out of our way to get a gift that ain't worth five dollars, and yet God gives us gifts that are abundant. He gives us gifts that are full. He gives us gifts that are so much more than monetary experience, and yet we leave it by the wayside. There are so many believers that go to the Word of God, and they read it and they meditate on it and they leave the word the same way that they came don't you know that when you read the word of God it is a book of accomplishments it is a book of a winner it is a book of victory every word I read in there reminds me that we win and the end that when it's all said and done though I may not get it down here but when it's all said and done though I may not get the acclaim down here but when it's all said and done that I may not get the pats on the back down here but when it's all said and done I may not get the big house down here but when it's all said and done I am a winner you are looking at victory in the making I am a prince I am a king not because of the blue blood of my father or my mother but because of my heavenly father there is completeness in this feeling. If you are missing some things as it pertains to your walk in the Lord, it is not because God has not provided it. It's because you've not grabbed a hold of it. 
And there are some things in the word of God you got to grab and you have to meditate on and remind yourself the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I'm feeling weak, I got to remind myself that all I have to do is meditate and believe on the things of God, that God, you're going to see me through. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fall. And if I fall, I'm going to get up again because a wise man who fall gets up seven times. There are some things about knowing who you are in the things of God that will allow you to declare fill me up please I don't just want a portion of God I want a whole of God I don't just I'm like Peter I don't want you to just wash my feet wash my entire body just cleanse me thoroughly God not only on the outside but on the inside And I'm telling you, when you begin to think like that, when you begin to pray like that, when you begin to meditate like that, I am telling you, God begins to flip the script in your life and everything becomes clear. The scales fall off your eyes. You begin to see the world very differently. You see your kids differently. You see your spouse differently. You see your friends differently. You see the kingdom differently. We're not just asking to be filled by anything and everything. I want to be filled with joy. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But I have to understand there are some things that come along with that feeling. One is I have to understand and know. Be mindful of the commander in the feeling. But I also have to be mindful and know that there is completeness in the filling. Jesus came in order that we might have it all. What's all, pastor? That you might not just have life, but that you may have it more abundantly. Yeah, yeah. The the world is just struggling through but we're supposed to be living abundantly yeah there's supposed to be a different level of joy and hope that's in us than that's in the world yeah we're not supposed to just be trying to maintain we're supposed to be thriving in this thing yeah we're supposed to be head and shoulders above well why pastor because we're the head we're not the tail we're above we're not beneath We're on the mountaintop, not scraping underneath the valley. Everything that God has promised us is yea and amen, and I want it all. Fill me up, please. The Bible says you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. You have something that the world does not have. And what is the use of having it if you ain't going to use it? I was telling my wife about a story when we were young. Got into a fight with some guys and we were outnumbered. Actually, my Aunt Sandra was telling the story, but a good friend of mine, we went down the street And we came back and we're walking back to this gang of folk. And he tells me he's going to pretend he has a gun. And I said, I think that's a bad decision. I was only 14 years. I said, I think that's a bad move. Let's not pretend we have a gun if we don't have a gun. And lo and behold, as we walked up to the crowd, guy said, if you got it, you better use it. If you got it, you better use it. And by the time they got to this, all heck broke loose. The fight was on. Family, if you got it, you need to use it. Your joy can provide joy and perspective to other people. Now, now here's what's interesting about this verse. Most of us would believe that it would say that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and joy. But it says they were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. Part 
of our problem is we don't anticipate what it is God is going to do. Don't you know you cannot truly receive and understand the gift of the Holy Ghost unless you have a perspective going into the relationship and the fellowship that is right? In other words, when I go to God, I expect to receive something. My attitude is right. My mind is ready to receive. In other words, as I go to God, I go to God with joy and anticipation. I'm happy to read his word. I'm happy to meditate on him. I'm happy to fellowship with him. And guess what? The Holy Ghost shows up and delivers every single time. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the commander in the filling. There's the commander in the filling, but then there's also the completeness in the filling. Let's run to this last one. Let's run to this last one. It's important that you understand not only the commander, be mindful of, not only mindful of the completeness, but then here's the last one, the condition in the filling. The Bible says the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Christ has promised to fill the hungry. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. As you read those words, as I have read those words over the years, you may long for this experience and think within yourself with discouragement of how short you fall. But let me tell you, when you think that way initially, you're right on the precipice of walking into the presence of God. It is not until you look at yourself and say, God, I am unworthy of your blessings. God, I don't know why it is you would save a wretch like me. With all the things that I've done and all the people that I've hurt and all the problems that I've had with the gang banging, with the sleeping around, with cheating people and lying to folk, with all of the confusion that I've caused, God, why is it that you would call somebody like me not only into the kingdom, but that you would bless me and gift me to be able to work in the ministry? Am I talking to anybody? There are some of us that realize that there is a condition to the feeling. This is not self-deprecation. This is just reminding yourself, I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. And let me tell you something. When you began to realize where it is God has brought you from, when you begin to think about how it is God has lifted you from muck and mire, when you begin to realize where it is out of the drudges, out of the, the, uh, the, the gutters, out of the, the sewers in which God has lifted you up out of. It's a condition of your mind that you're ever humble before God, that you're ever mindful before God. You remember, God, I'm not deserving of a wife like this. God said, but I gave her to you anyway. You're not deserving of the husband that you have, but God says, but I gave him to you anyway. God, I never even finished high school. I don't have a college degree, but all my kids been gone to college. All my kids are on the right track. God, I don't deserve that. And God said, but I gave it to you anyway. God, my mother never owned a house and my grandmother never owned a house, but you blessed me to be able to write my name on the deed and pay for a house. God says, you didn't deserve it, but I gave it to you anyway. Why? Because your spirit is right. Because your spirit is humble. Because you understand where your blessings come from. Or maybe you don't. Is there anybody who forgot who it is that woke you up this morning? Is there anybody who forgot who it was who protected you last night? Is there anybody who forgot who it was that placed a hedge of protection about you 
and allowed you to get here this morning. It's God. 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 And I have joy and I have the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody who says I got them both? I am a two-barrel shotgun. There's a double indemnity on my life. I got joy and I got the Holy Ghost. I said I got the Holy Ghost. I said I got the Holy Ghost. This ain't playing. This ain't for show. I got the Holy Ghost. I didn't get him when I got here. I had him on the way here. Is there anybody who woke up this morning thinking about the things of God, singing praises in your spirit to him? You have joy. And the Holy Ghost. The Bible says these disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I can't wait till we get back to church. I want to be able to stand at the back door and as people go by and shake my hand and hug me, I want to be able to say, sister, you feel with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I can see it on your brother. You feel with joy and with the Holy Ghost. First lady, you feel with joy and the Holy Ghost. Sister Grant, you're filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Sister Parker, you got joy, you got joy, you got joy and the Holy Ghost. You didn't just get one. You got them both. Yeah, I, I want all that God has prepared for me. Fill me up. Please, I want joy that is unspeakable and undeniable. I want a positive outlook on everything, God, you have purpose for my life. I want to walk worthy of the vocation in which you called me. I want to know, God, in spite of what's happening around me in the world, God, I know you got my back. I know you got my back. I know you got my back, God. And while everybody else is crying and weeping, I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have joy. Even when the money is funny, even when my change is strange, I'm going to have joy. Even when my kids ain't acting exactly the way I want them to, God, I'm going to have joy. Why? Because I know you can turn it around. I know you can fix it, God. I know you specializes in fixing some things. I'm going to have joy. And as long as I got joy, and as long as I got the Holy Ghost, I can look at whatever situation, whatever problem I'm facing, and I can declare this too shall pass. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. So pull on up to the pump. Your deuce and a quarter, your Benz, your Datsun, Mother Arterbury, your Lexus, and just declare unto God, fill me up, please. Is there anybody want to be filled today? Want to be filled today? I want to be filled to the brim. I want to be filled until it's running over on the outside. Amen. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, no joy, no Holy Ghost, no peace, no hope, no grace. Your perspective is darkened and your outlook is cloudy. But today we can fix all that. We can fix all that. I, I don't know how to work on a car. If your transmission goes out, I can't help you. I can't help you. Matter of fact, I don't even change tires. Amen. I call, I call AAA or somebody to change a tire for me. But I'm telling you, 
If your soul's not right, I can help you with that. Yeah, I, I got some skills to help you. God has gifted me with some things to be able to help you if your life is not right. The first thing that I would declare unto you is you need to surrender yourself to God and you need to accept Jesus in your life. I'm telling you, when he comes in, you'll never, ever be the same. Pray with me. God, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for those who are listening near and abroad. We ask a blessing upon the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church. Pray for the people, Lord God, the inhabitants thereof. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless and keep us as only you can. But God, more importantly, we're praying for those who do not know you in the pardon of their sins. There are some, Lord God, we believe that are listening, who are unchurched and unsaved, who has not accepted you or called upon your name, Lord God. They don't even know that they're lost. God, I pray that you would remind them that you came down through 42 generations in order to provide them an opportunity to accept you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray right now that you would break up the fallow ground of their hearts and their minds. I pray, Lord God, that you would allow them to feel your presence like never before. And I pray, Lord God, that in return, they would cry out as the jailer did to Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? I pray that we would point them to the cross where Jesus hung, bled, and died was placed in a borrowed tomb, but three days later, got up with all power and authority in his hands. Now, God, we pray that they would pray that I am a sinner, that I am lost, that I am wretched, I am undeserving of your love and your grace, but God, I thank you for the work in which Jesus has done. I accept him as Lord and Savior, as commander and chief of my life. I invite you in, Jesus, not as a participant, but as the ruler, as the head of me. God, I believe that you raised him from the dead and that he's seated at the right hand of the Father, even now making intercession for me. If you prayed that prayer, and if you believed it in your heart, you have just crossed over from darkness into the marvelous light, and the angels in heaven are rejoicing even now. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus, our Savior's name. Let the people of God say, Amen. Come on and give God some praise. I said, come on and give God some praise. Fill me up, fill me up, fill me up. Yeah, yeah, fill me up. I want more than just joy and hope. I want peace and I want understanding and I want clarity of thought and I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. Bless your family. We appreciate you. For those of you who are listening, Near and abroad, we appreciate you tuning in today. We pray that something was said or done that blessed your heart. We appreciate the fact that you're taking time out each week to participate, to join with us by way of streaming, uh, by way of podcast. And we pray that God is keeping you and blessing you in spite of all that's going on around you. Listen, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Reach out to us. Send us an email. We want to hear from you. Also, one thing I've not mentioned in the past, but I, I need to mention it uh, since this pandemic is stretching out. If you have a desire to join us on Wednesday nights for Bible study, we do a Zoom Bible study every week. Even if you're not a member, you want to join us for Bible study, reach out to Sister Lydia Haley Clark. Send her an email. We'll get you the password. You can join us for Bible study as well. Amen. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Listen, family, in this 2020 experience, all of your being, all of your doing, and of all of your getting, God will be glorified. God bless you, family. We love you.
Hello, family. It's Pastor Thomas, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the podcast today. We pray that something was said that encouraged and inspired your heart during this difficult time. I pray that you are being strong and that your spiritual resolve is being fortified and strengthened during this difficult time. To the Mount Sinai family, we want to encourage you, if you've not done so yet, to make sure that as you go on to the website, that you would take a moment to go on and hit the PayPal button and that you would send your tithes and your offerings to the church. We are still a church body and we are still in need of the financial support in which you provide on a consistent and regular basis. If you do not feel comfortable by sending your tithes and offerings by way of PayPal, you can feel free to send a money order or a check or a cashier's check to the church. Uh, attention, uh, our secretary, Sister Lydia Haley, she'll make sure that the deacons get it. We ask that you please do not send cash to the church. And then also we want to encourage those of you who are listening in other states and other countries. We want to thank you for tuning in. I pray that you are encouraged today by that which you've heard. And also uh, for those of you who are unchurched and unsaved, I pray that this not take the place of uh, a local ministry for you, but that you would go and find a Bible preaching, Bible teaching and God fearing church to join with and become a part of that you might go forth sowing much fruit in the kingdom of God. Family, we love you and we thank God for you. And remember, God will be glorified. Thank you.